Well, folks, it's been six months. It's been half a year. And this is our 2019 Ram Rebel long-term tester. Yes, we purchased it back in 2018. And these are the top five most important things we've learned about our long-term truck. There's some good and there's some bad. So you gotta watch this. Question. Why did we buy this truck? We had choices of all the other trucks. Yeah, well, first of all, the Ram was new, but this e-torque system, the mild hybrid, the 48 volt system was the primary reason because it's brand new technology. Right. It has a promise of better fuel efficiency, at least in the city. Yeah. And we wanted to see how it lasts. And so far, it hasn't let us down. It never broke down. It's uh, the auto start stop feature on this truck runs beautifully still. So, so far, no issues right here. And I lie to people and tell them it's a supercharger because it kind of looks like one. <laughs> yeah, uh, it could be like a pro charger. Yeah, it looks cool. Well, we have about 5,000 miles on this truck and these are hard miles, both off-road and on the highway. And number five on our list is fuel economy. Yes, we've done a lot of road trips already and the fuel economy is the not so good part about this. 19 MPG combined rating on this V8 e-torque system, but on our highway loop at 70 miles an hour, well, watch this video to find out exactly what we got with this truck. I made it back to the pump and trip meter says 16.7. This is worse than last time when the trip meter said 17.5. So let's get the, to the bottom of it at the pump. Okay, so I filled up again at the very end of the run, topped off after 30 seconds, same procedure once again. Final amount of gallons I used, 5.484. So let's do the calculation once again. 98 miles divided by 5.484 equals 17.8. It's no better than we did on Moab trip, which was 17.9. So I think about 18 on the highway is where the Rebel likes to be. And this truck here has a 23 gallon fuel tank, which is the smallest tank option on the Hemi. That wasn't our choice to begin with, but we had to get the e-torque system and we had to get the crew gap and we had to get the red truck. So we made a compromise on the fuel tank. This truck has a lot of options. The MSRP or the sticker price was about $59,000, but it doesn't have one thing that I wish it did. It doesn't have a front camera, so no 360 degree view on this $59,000 Rebel. Rem says that may be coming in the future as an option, but come on guys, the Power Wagon has it now. Where, where is it? Andre, number four on this list has gotta be towing. Yep, and we've told quite a lot with this Rebel. And we did a comparison on the iGauntlet, world's toughest towing test at over 11,000 feet above sea level. This truck against the Ford Raptor. So Andre, let's recap. Both trucks had the identical time going up the mountain. Yep. They both had the identical fuel economy going up the mountain. Weird. But, the Ram did worse in braking going down the mountain. Yeah, just by two applications. But the Ram has better towing mirrors and yep. certainly better hookups for the chains. Yes. So, if it were your money, which would you buy if you wanted the ultimate off-road towing rig? I would have to choose the Ram Rebel for a couple of reasons. You mentioned two of them, the mirrors and the chain hookups, but also the total rating and payload. Over 11,000 pounds in the Rebel and a higher payload? Hell yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt you can't compare 8,000 pounds to over 11,000 pounds. And when you take the payload into effect, the Raptor just doesn't compete. So the Ram Rebel, I think by far is a better towing rig. Here's the thing about the Rebel. Yes, it's an off-road package, but it actually can tow over 11,000 pounds. That's the rating. This truck has proven to be 
much better than all of us anticipated when it came to towing. And it doesn't even have the airbag suspension. This has got the steel suspension. Correct, steel springs all the way around. It's stable, it's good, it's got a lot of power, plus for towing. Yeah, I bet you guys are wondering about this Polaris. Well, this particular vehicle we are featuring on our new off-road channel. We're using it today as a prop, and no, we didn't buy it, but it is a long-term tester. Number three is maintenance, and there is some good, and there's also some not so good. Well, let me show you on the inside. We've gone off-roading in this truck quite a lot, and we noticed a rattle in the front suspension, and we took it to the dealer, and there was a couple of loose bolts on the tie rod ends. They were tightened, problem disappeared, not a huge deal, fixed. But there are two recalls on the Ram 1500, particularly this one. One has to do with a loose battery cable under the hood, which could temporarily disable power steering. At least that's the recall definition. So you don't have constant feeling in the steering. We've never noticed this issue. And number two has to do with this. The second recall is about the adjustable pedals, especially for the brake. You can actually put them in and out for comfort. And there's a recall about it because sometimes the pedal can go too far, preventing you from applying the brake. Once again, we haven't ran into this problem, but we gotta take care of these recalls. So yes, we made two trips to the dealership, but overall, maintenance-wise, it's been easy going. Number two on our list is just daily driving. Yep. I like driving this truck, just in general. City traffic, with or without a trailer, it's quiet. Obviously, we've talked about the interior ad nauseum, and it is yeah. a gorgeous interior, but it's also a very comfortable interior. It's a fairly quiet truck. Still has a good exhaust note. It really is one of the best daily drivers that we've had at TFL, that's a truck. Yeah, and it just kind of shows that you really don't need, at least in my opinion, the air suspension. Yes, it's nice, you can lift and lower the truck. That is nice to right? have. But it's an additional cost. Right. But these steel coil springs and the Bilstein shocks and the tires, the combination together makes it for a very stable truck. Number one has to be, without a doubt, off-road ability because this truck has surprised us. It has done very well off-road. It's dealt with all of our abuse and it keeps coming back for more. Heck yeah, we've taken it on many off-road trails, especially in Moab. Yep. Just check out this video. Golly. You're about to hit, dude. There you go. Now you, your wheel's about to go over. There you go, you're going over. Oh. Now, here's, here's the question, is he going to hit the exhaust pipes? Probably. Are you ready? This is departure angle. Oh my, it sounds like a very, very distraught cow. Okay, you're about to hit, Tommy. Keep going, keep going. Okay, you're going to go down now. I'm going to bet that the hitch is going to hit. All right, you're about to go down. Going down, hit your head. Or exhaust pipe. Oh, my. And the truck has all the goodies. Yeah, it I mean, does. Skid plates. Yep. It's got Bilstein shocks. Yep. It's got hill descent control. It's got the Wrangler Duratrack tires. Yep. You know, what else do you need? And you know, everything has worked together in this truck, so it's still drivable, but at the same time, seriously, off-road, being able to do what it does, there are very few trucks that can really challenge it. There's only one tiny, tiny issue. The wheelbase is long, and the breakover angle in the middle is not great, but otherwise, good truck. Well, once we lift it and put 40s on it, everything's gonna be fine. And speaking of modifications, we have a big plan for this Rebel. Oh yeah? And it's a project series that I want to call Rim Rebel Rouser. 
Ooh, I like it. Machine guns? No, no machine guns, but a lot of accessories and customized parts, mostly from Mopar. And I want to make this truck a little bit more off-road worthy, uh -huh. but also louder and a little bit quicker. Ooh, I like all of that. What do you guys think? Don't forget to join us for more of that series coming in the very near future. And go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real world truck reviews. See you next time. So Nathan, how much horsepower do we have in this Hemi? More than three. <laughs> <laughs>